Hello and welcome to Alchemancy, a two-player summoner-style card game. My name is Moonfasa, I'm a YouTuber and Twitch streamer, and I've played a lot of digital card games, especially those with some kind of board element to the game. And I'm the designer behind Alchemancy. What you're looking at here is my tabletop simulator mod. We're going to talk in a minute about how to play, but first I want to stress that this is a prototype, so several of the cards that I showcase here might end up changing in the future. The core game rules will most likely stay the same, but join the official Discord server down in the description if you want to stay up to date on all of the game rules. So this game is set in times of alchemancy, obviously, but in this world the mythical substance known as Karmit was discovered in several pockets in the earth, which when processed correctly creates mana, allowing the alchemancers to summon creatures and control the elements. You and your opponent start the game on this island rich with resources, and you'll each have a laboratory with 20 health. Your goal is to defeat the opponent's laboratory and claim the island for yourself. But to do so, you'll have to harvest the existing resources on the island to summon your own creatures, play defensive structures and spells from your hand, and manipulate the terrain around you, while being careful not to get swept away by the shifting tides. Before you begin, both players should roll a die to see who goes first. The winning player will seat themselves in the blue spot, and the second player will take red. If this is your first game in Alchemancy, I'd recommend picking a pre-constructed deck to begin. You can find those by clicking this button just below the T-stained card here. These are ordered by difficulty, with the easiest decks to pilot and understand on the left, and the most complicated on the right. I'm going to lay out the wood and water decks here with Boris and Kaya as our Alchemancers. These will give us certain abilities to use each turn, and are a big part of resource management in this game. Each player will have a deck of 30 cards, with up to 3 copies of each non-legendary card and 1 copy of each legendary. Feel free to use the deck building tools off to the side here if you don't care for precons. Any cards on these layouts can be included in your deck, but you'll see later that soft faction restrictions apply based on which alchemancer you choose. Once you have your decks, we can slot them into the right spaces over here, if you're unfamiliar with Tabletop Simulator, you can rotate objects using Q and E on your keyboard and flip it using F. Once both players are set up with their Alchemancers and decks in the right spots, click the Start Game button and each player will automatically draw 6 cards from their deck. A lot of this mod will automate things for you, so you don't have to worry too much about micromanagement. But here is the mulligan. Out of our 6 cards, we choose 3 of them to shuffle back into our deck. You can place these on top of your deck and press R to shuffle. To make this decision though, we should probably learn about the different card types and resources in this game. There are 5 different card types. Creatures are what we use to fight with on the board. They will have an attack power, movement points, and health. When you first summon a creature, it will start off asleep, making it unable to do anything until your next turn. When it wakes up from its slumber, it gets to do two things. You can move it up to its movement points, and you can attack any adjacent enemies. Attacking will end its turn though, so you have to move first and attack second in that order. While in combat, both creatures will deal their power and damage to each other, and anything with zero health remaining will be placed in the graveyard or discard pile. As for resources, all cards will have a mana cost shown in the top left, and a conduit threshold shown right below that. Mana is a cumulative resource you build up over time, but Conduit is a threshold you have to reach in order to play the card, not a cost. There's five different Conduit types, plus a wild symbol in which any Conduit can be used, and these basically represent the various different factions. Cards can have up to two different Conduit costs, which allows for mixing and matching in deck building. This Timberwolf, though, simply has a conduit threshold of 1 lumber and a mana cost of 3. Structures are fairly straightforward, these don't have power or movement, so they can't move or fight back, but they will stay on the board until their health reaches 0. Effects are one-time uses when played, these are like spell cards for most other card games. After the effect is resolved, you can put it into your graveyard. Next up is a very unique card type, Terrain. So how this works is, you summon this terrain on any non-well space on the board, we'll talk about wells later, and this can occupy the same space as creatures or structures. When you play your terrain card, you turn it sideways and lose control over it. Whoever stands on a terrain card will gain control of it. 
This is relevant for certain keywords. Alchemancers are the big jumbo cards you start the game with. These are your primary way of gaining Conduit as a resource. Once per turn, you can activate one of these four abilities here. You'll gain or lose Conduit resources on the left side of the colon depending on the ability you pick, and then resolve the text on the right side of the colon. Most Alchemancers will have this first ability here that says build two canals. And canals are your primary way to gain mana as a resource, so let's talk about that. Player 2 will start with 2 extra mana to start the game with, but the rest of it is gained through these mana wells on the board, which also will represent your summoning zones. All wells except the center well will fill with a maximum of 1 mana at the start of each turn. The 3 wells next to your laboratory are all within collection range, so these will automatically be harvested at the start of your turn and be added here. These corner wells, however, are a little far out of reach, so in order to access these, we need to fulfill fulfill two conditions. We have to link ourselves to that well using canal building that I mentioned earlier, and we need a non-sleeping creature to operate the contraption and send the mana back to our laboratory. Canals can be placed in a chain from the lab, and wells will extend this chain, so if we wanted to we could build canals to this well here, and then continue building on the other side for future turns. Whenever you have a non-sleeping creature within one range of a well, you can use a free action to right-click this, and it'll automatically get sent back to your laboratory's mana pool. We can also summon creatures and structures within one range of any linked wells. Except if an enemy creature or structure is standing on one of these wells, and except for your opponent's three wells. These ones cannot be operated by you in any way. But if you've been wondering what this empty well is used for in the center of the board, you might not be able to collect from it, but you can summon things on it because canals can actually be built on land, these green spaces, and ocean spaces as well. Speaking about land, most cards can only exist on land spaces. There are some exceptions to this with certain keywords, but also cards belonging to the water element, which are any cards in navy blue, like our friend Kaya here. These water cards can only exist on water spaces. Now canals serve yet another purpose, in that both water and land creatures can exist on spaces with canals built there. The same is true for wells. Both water and land creatures can stand on well spaces. You can also walk on your opponent's canals, and canals can actually overlap too if you and your opponent start contesting the same sides of the board. As you look at this board, you may notice that linking these closest side wells looks pretty easy. I mentioned that most Alchemancers will have a build to canal ability, so you could just fill in these two spaces to immediately link to that well. But then in comes the roaring tides to sweep those canals away. So the last feature of this game is the lunar clock you'll find off to the side here. Every time a player passes their turn, the clock will advance by one stage. As soon as the clock strikes a full or new moon, the white or black moons, the tides will come rushing in, immediately destroying any canals built along the outer two rings of hexes. You'll notice too that these shifting tides may end up rolling over our land creatures. So creatures and structures and terrain are all a little more durable than canals, and will not be destroyed immediately when the tides roll in. This will all happen at the end step of either player's turn. Right before a player passes their turn, they will destroy anything that isn't on the correct spaces, such as land creatures on water, or water creatures that have found themselves on land. This is known as suffocating, and it doesn't matter whose turn it is, everything will be destroyed if it's in the wrong place at the end of turn. So because the tides inevitably destroy canals built on the edges here, it's often safer to build them along this line of three rather than the easy line of two. But there will be moments in the game where a quick and greedy side collection is beneficial to go for. Another strategy to keep in mind is that whenever the full moon is coming up next, it means the tides will be active on player one's turn. If the new moon is coming up next, it will always happen on player 2's turn. So if you time this correctly, you can use canal building to your advantage to sit a creature either aggressively on the edge to then save it with canals, or sit a creature between these two wells so you can then build two canals and collect off both of them with a single creature. The full and new moons also play around with a few keywords in the game, most notably the half-life keyword which is found on all terrain cards. This half-life count will tick down whenever a full or new moon arises and destroy the card once it's 
half-life count reaches zero. So terrain is pretty temporary, but you can get more or less value out of these types of cards depending on how you time their plays. If you want to know what other keywords do, you can find a list of these at the end of my rulebook, which I'll leave a link for in the description. So that's all the gameplay you need to know about to start your first game. If you have any questions about the rules, be sure to join the Discord server, link in the description, and this will also be the place to find opponents to play with. I'll be working on a dedicated digital client with proper matchmaking, but that will be far in the future, so we're gonna use Tabletop Simulator in the meantime. Huge shout out to my friend Dax for doing all the backend programming for this mod. If you're ever looking for a TTS modder to make your own game, I can't recommend him enough. He did a fantastic job of this one. Thanks for trying out Alchemancy. Let me know what you thought of it once you've played, and I hope to see you around.